Hello students in Math 141. So this week in Lab 3, we have been using the parabolas to model various data that we have collected. Um, in particular, we use the formula y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. So let's see if we can use that equation and then also use Excel and see how close they are. I'm looking at number 123 from um, chapter 3. It says the economic rise of China has greatly increased American interest in learning Chinese. The following table lists the U.S. college and university enrollments in thousands to study Chinese. And then it gives us the data. It says find a quadratic equation that model models the data. Support your answers graphically. And then estimate the enrollment to study Chinese in 2006, which is, you know, obviously in between these two, and compare that to the actual value of 51,000. So one would assume that these are in thousands. So let's uh, first just graph those data. So I'm just going to make a little table here that um, has the year, so 1980. And then um, that had 11,000. And then in 1986, it was 17,000. You can skip ahead if you want, but you might have to type this in. 1995, 27,000. 2002, it was 34,000. And 2009, it was 61,000. All right, so the first thing I think we should do is to just chart this and get some kind of an idea of what it looks like. So I'm just going to select those two columns, that those two uh, sets of data within those columns, and I'll say insert, uh, and then we're just going to insert a scatter plot, and then it tells you what kind, I think I like the kind where it's connected, scatter with smooth lines and markers. Huh, that doesn't look too parabolic, but, you know, it's a, we'll see how close that we can get. So in class, we talked about the idea of um, using the first point here. It looks as though the parabola is going to kind of go up like this. So we can assume that this could be the vertex, and this could be a point on the um, parabola. So if we do that, and we use the regular formula, which is right here, you can see we're going to use y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. So in this case, the xy is this point right up here the 2009 comma 61 and the hk which is the coordinates of the vertex is down here 1980 comma 11. so um, when we put the x y h and k into this formula we get 61 is equal to a times 2009 minus 1980 squared plus 11 and when you do the math and you solve for a you have a coefficient here of a which is 0.0595 so our final equation is y equals 0 0.0595 times the quantity x minus 1980 squared plus 11. So what I'd like to do is to see how that fits on the graph here. So I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to say, let's just call this the um, point vertex approximation. And so what we're going to say here is that this point is going to be equal to, these are your x's still, so it's going to be equal to 0 0.0595 times, and then down here it's x minus 1980 squared. So it's times the quantity, and now for x, we're going to use this 1980 minus 1980, end parentheses, caret 2, that means squared. Uh, plus 11, plus 11. And I'm getting this formula here right from this formula here, where the x is this first 1980. So we know the coordinates of this should be 11 when I for the y value, right? So if I plug that in, boom, we do get 11. Now then one of the nice things about spreadsheets is that you can just select and copy down, and what that means is it's going to copy the formula, but it's going to use each of these um, entries in the columns down. So now I can say uh, control D, that means copy down. Now one of the, another nice thing about the um, spreadsheets is that when, notice when I click on the graph, the um, two columns that we had originally selected show up. And what I want to say basically is, is expand 
so that you add this uh, next set of data. And what you see is, in fact, a parabola where this point here is the vertex and this point here is another point on the parabola. So we can see this red line here is what we would get if we were to use the formula. Now what it says in um, the regression is we want to use Excel to do that. So I'm going to say um, layout and I'm going to say trend line here. So I'm going to say add a trend line. Now we don't want linear or exponential, although we're probably going to do exponential in um, coming labs. But for now, we want to say more trend line options. Uh, and we want to end the trend line based on series one, because that's the original data. So I say OK. And then it tells me, well, which do you want? Exponential, linear, logarithmic, polynomial, power, or moving average? We want a polynomial of order two. That's the same thing as saying of degree two. And so I say, play. actually, yeah. So now you can't see it too well, but it's amazing how close it fits with our own uh, parabola there. One thing that we can do actually is I'm going to just select it if I can um, and go here. If you say here, you can see format selection here. I'm going to click on that just so that we can see it better. So I'll say line style. Let's just make it thicker here. Come on. There we go. And line color, I don't know. We haven't used green yet. How about we use green? So we'll say solid line color, kind of a dark green. Okay. And then we close. And now you can see, if you can, that the green line falls almost right on top of the red line, which shows that our mathematics was very close to the actual regression, even though the regression is a statistical um, way of computing the best fit line. So in this case now, what we want to say is, what would we expect to have happen? It says here, what would we expect to have happen in 2006? So I can just put the 2006 here uh, as our next data point, and notice that this fills down, and it says, 51.22. So we would expect 51.22 thousand and notice that the actual value is 51,000. So it turns out that the estimate was actually very, very good. So that uh, this ends this um, particular little video so that hopefully you understand how to use Excel to make a quadratic trend line.